multiplying complex numbers. So mathematicians came up with a way to multiply complex numbers that made a lot of sense. And it's actually going to remind you a lot of when we were multiplying polynomials. So let's say we have two numbers. Let's do a few examples first. If we have two numbers, two complex numbers, and 2i is a complex number because we could just write this as 0 plus 2i, times 5 minus 3i. Now when we do this, we're going to use the distributive property. So the distributive property, we're going to take this 2i and we're going to give it to both parts of this complex number. So 2i times 5 and 2i times negative 3i. So let's go ahead and do that. 2i times 5 is going to give us a 10i, and 2i times negative 3i is negative 6i squared. Now here's where we need to remember what i squared actually is. i squared is negative 1, so instead of that i squared right there, we can replace that with a negative 1. So we have negative 6 times negative 1, which is a positive 6. So we have 10i plus 6, but that's not really how we write complex numbers. We write the real part first, so just reversing them, we have 6 plus 10i. Let's look at some complex numbers that don't have 0 as part of them. So let's say we have 5 plus 3i times 4 plus 2i. So if we have two complex numbers, now this should remind you of multiplying binomials. So we have right here, we're going to distribute the 5 to both parts of this number, and we're also going to distribute the, the 3i to both parts. So first let's do the 5. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 2i is going to give us a positive 10i. Now let's go over here to the 3i. 3i times 4 is going to give us a 12i. And 3i times 2i is going to give us a 6i squared. Now we see that i squared, and we want to remember i squared is equal to negative 1. So we've got all of this stuff here, and we're going to do just like we did when we were multiplying polynomials. We are going to combine like parts of our complex number. So we have 20 here. Let's just go ahead and write that down here. And then we have 10i plus 12i, which is going to give us a 22i. And this over here, 6i squared, is the same as negative 6. And now we can combine our real parts of our complex numbers. We have 20 minus 6, which is 14, plus 22i. Let's look at another example. So say we have negative 7 minus 3i times 2 minus i. We've got a couple of negative signs in there, and we have to remember our operations with integers there. Same thing, we're going to distribute the negative 7. So negative 7 to 2 is going to give us a negative 14. Negative 7 times negative i is going to give us a positive 7i. Let's also do that with a negative 3i. Negative 3i times 2 is negative 6i, and negative 3i times negative i is a positive, negative times negative, is a positive 3i squared. But again, we're going to remember that i squared is equal to negative 1. So now we're going to combine like parts. So we have negative 14 plus i. We have 7i minus 6i, which is just i minus 3, because that i squared is a negative 1. Now we can combine the real parts. That's negative 17 plus i. All right, one more example. Let's say we have 2 minus 5i times 2 plus 5i. Now it looks like the difference of squares there. Let's see what that does to our complex number. So let's first distribute the 2 to, to the, both parts of this complex number. So 2 times 2 is going to give us a 4. 2 times 5i is going to give us a positive 10i. Same thing with the negative 5i. Negative 5i times 2 is going to give us a negative 10i. And negative 5i times 5i is going to give us a negative 25i squared. Remembering that i squared is equal to negative 1. Now notice. I have a 10i and a negative 10i. So my i term is actually, they're going to cancel each other out here. They're going to add together to be a 0. And my i squared I'm going to replace with a negative 1. And so I have 4, no i terms, plus, plus 
25 because that i squared is a negative 1. Negative times negative is going to give me a positive. So I get 29. 29 is also a complex number. It's just 29 plus 0i, but I have no imaginary terms in that. Now let's take a look at what would happen if we just used variables when we were multiplying complex numbers. Now, oftentimes in algebra we do this either to prove something, but I think more importantly it's to look at every case and be able to have computers solve it for us. If we can write it in terms of variables, those variables can be any real number. So multiplying complex numbers using variables, we're going to say a plus bi at a time c plus di and the a b c and d are all in our real numbers so if we can show that it works for any real number we can actually use that formula to plug it into a computer and solve any multiplication problem just like a calculator so a b c and d are elements in the real numbers and we're going to go ahead and do the same process it'll be a little bit more difficult because we can't actually simplify by doing the computations so we have a here, and we're going to distribute it to both c and di. So we have a times c, which is just ac. We don't have to write the time sign in between there when we've got variables. And then we have a times di, which is adi. Same thing with the bi. bi times c is going to give us a bci. bi times di is going to give us a plus bdi squared. And again, we have to remember that i squared is equal to negative 1. So now let's try and combine some terms with this. There, it's, it's kind of ugly because we can't actually do that multiplication, but we can leave it in terms of that. That's going to give us a real number. So we have a, c, and then these two right here are i terms. So we're going to actually factor out that i. So put the i over here, and then we have a, d plus b, c. If we were to distribute that i back, we would get back up here. This is actually the same thing, but we can see that this is actually going to give us a number. If we let a, d, b, and c all belong to the reals, and they're all numbers, we can actually perform that calculation. We can multiply a times d, and we can add it to whatever b times c is. And then we have negative b, d, and that's because of this i squared again. So that i squared gives us a negative 1, so that's a negative bd. Now if we look at it, we can see these are the real parts of our complex number. And this is the imaginary part. So we're going to combine the real parts together. So we have ac minus bd plus ad plus bc times i. And then there's our complex number. For any of those, very anything in the real numbers, we can use this when we're multiplying any two real numbers. We can use this formula and figure out what our answer is going to be. We can feed it to a computer. We can feed it to a calculator. And we can make the calculator and the computer do our work. We could also use this to help prove that multiplying complex numbers is commutative.